Test, test, one, two, three. How's everybody doing? Everybody's good? Happy to be here? How many people had a hard week? A long week? I know, right? There's a lot of struggles. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of things that we go through during the week. But for this moment, for this time, we can come into the house of the Lord and worship and praise Him, right? We can come before God and focus on Him. We can leave the bills outside, right? We can leave the worries and cares outside. And for now, we can focus on God. Isn't that amazing? And today, that is what we are going to do. We are going to focus on our God. Today, we are going to look at the Sabbath day. As we saw with the children's story, we're going to look at God's Sabbath day. So I have a question for you guys. I want to hear your answers today. We're going to be interactive today. We're going to talk, all right? What do you think of when you think of the Sabbath? Rest? What do you think of when you think of Sabbath? Sanctuary. Maybe when you think of Sabbath, you think of dressing up and going to church, right? Maybe when you think of the Sabbath, you think of singing songs in a church service, beautiful things, right? Maybe when you think of Sabbath, you think of a potluck, right? Oh, that, that's, that's where you can find me, near the potluck, right? When you think of Sabbath, sometimes other people think of other things. Sometimes people think of the Sabbath, it's like, oh, Sabbath again. Why am I here? When is it going to be over? I don't want to go to church today. Other people, when they think of the Sabbath, they think of a theological discussion. Which day is the right day? Is it the seventh day? Is it the first day? And we make it just a discussion. We make it just a doctrine. But today, I want to show you that the Sabbath is so much more than that. And it is a great tragedy. We have robbed the Sabbath of its meaning and what God created it to be. When we push it down to just a discussion, when we put it down to just a church service that lasts an hour a week, we have robbed it of its meaning. So today we want to look at the Bible. We want to look at God's Word and discover what did He create, what truly is the Sabbath, and why did God create it for us? Because there's a lot of burnout, right? How many people have had burnout before in their lives? How many people are burned out right now? Maybe burned out physically, maybe burned out mentally, maybe burned out spiritually. We have a lot of burnout, and the Sabbath is a thing. If we have the Sabbath in our lives, it prevents us against all of this burnout. So today we are going to look at the Sabbath day. We want to rekindle the flame and keep our lights burning, and it begins with the Sabbath. So let's look at today, the Sabbath day. But before we go any further, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, this moment, this time when we can come and worship and praise you. We thank you so much for life. Well, Lord God, we need you here. We need your Holy Spirit in this place right now. Please teach us. Please help us to understand your words today. And please help help us to apply them to our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to look at the Sabbath today, and it's what I call the treasure chest, the meaning of the Sabbath. When you look at the Sabbath, there are so many meanings, there's so many cool things in it. When you open it up, you see all the beauty that God has given it. So we want to look at this Sabbath, and I want to reintroduce you to the Sabbath day because it's so much different than what I grew up with. See, when I grew up, I looked at the Sabbath, and I was like, what is it? I thought the Sabbath was just a day that I go to church. I thought the Sabbath was just a day that I eat. But the Sabbath is so much more than that. So we have to ask our question, what is the Sabbath? Because I grew up and I didn't even know what the Sabbath was. Even though I was Adventist my whole life, I didn't know what the Sabbath is. So let's look. What is the Sabbath? Does everybody have their Bibles today? Maybe it's on your phone. Maybe it's in a book. We're going to go to Exodus 31, and I want you to highlight this. I want you to circle it because it shows us in the best way what is the Sabbath day. Why did God make the Sabbath? Exodus chapter 31 tells us, Wherefore, 
the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. And then it says, it is a sign between me and the children of Israel, between me and God's people forever. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and he rested. See, it is a sign, the Sabbath is a sign that points to the Creator. The Sabbath is a sign that points to the fact that God made the heavens and the earth. What is a sign? When you look at a sign, what does a sign mean? It means that, hey, if you go this way, you'll get to Los Angeles, right? If you go that way, you'll get to Sacramento. It's a sign that is pointing to something else. And when we see the Sabbath, we see what the Sabbath day is. It is a sign that is pointing to creation. It is a sign that is pointing to our Creator. It says here that it's a sign that points to the fact that in six days God made the heavens and the earth. My friends, I want to let you know today that the Sabbath is a sign that points us to the Creator. We have to remember that. We have to have word association in our mind. And when we think of Sabbath, when we think of the Sabbath day, what should come in our mind? Creation. It should not be, when you think of the Sabbath, boring. <laughs> Oh, when I think of the Sabbath, all these other things. But when we think of the Sabbath, we think of the Creator. I want to show you this. Maybe you've never seen it before. Colossians chapter 1, it says, Christ, who does it say? Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and supreme over all creation. And get this part, I want you to see this. It says, for by Him... By Christ, we saw all things were created in heaven and on earth. I didn't know if you knew this or not, but Jesus is the creator. When it says in the beginning, God, it was Jesus who was creating the heavens and the earth. When, when God says, let there be light, it was Jesus who was the creator. When we see in creation that God said, let there be a sky, it was Jesus that was back then with his voice creating these things. When we see that he created the fish and the, the birds and everything, God created those things and it was Jesus that is the creator. And when it comes to day six, it was Jesus that got down on his hands and knees and formed us with his very own hands. It is Jesus that created us in his own image, in the image of God. My friends, Jesus is the creator. So when we think about the Sabbath, when we think about what the Sabbath is, in its essence, in its most basic form, Jesus, the Sabbath is pointing to Jesus. The Sabbath is pointing to the fact that Jesus is the creator. The Sabbath is pointing to the fact of God and what he has done for us. Now the question is why remember creation? Why is it so important that we remember creation? Why is it so important that we remember who God is and what he did back then? Let's go back. Let's go back to creation. Let's go back and let's look at God's nature. Now I have a question for you guys. What is your favorite part of nature? What is your favorite part of creation? When you think of God's creations, what is your favorite part? Ocean? We have many different things, right? Maybe it's the water, the ocean. Maybe it's the mountains. Maybe you love to go hiking. Maybe it's God's animals, right? The beautiful things that God made. Now, for me, my favorite is without a doubt... My favorite is tacos. <laughs> I don't know what day that God created those, but tacos, that's my favorite, right? Now, honestly, you know, God didn't create tacos in creation, but it's a beautiful creation, right? God created beautiful things. So why remember creation? Why make a day that is, that is pointing to creation? And one, it shows us our origin story. Creation shows us where we come from. Creation shows us that we don't come from a big bang. Creation shows us that we don't come from monkeys. This is not our great grandfather, as cute as it is. This is not where we come from. Creation shows us that we were created by a loving God. 
You were created with love. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but you are not an accident. You are not here by mistake. You are here on purpose from a loving God. Psalms 139 says, you, God, saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. My friends, God knew you would be born. God knew you would be here. No matter what the circumstances are around your birth, you are here on purpose. And not only that, the Bible says you are here and God gave you a plan. God has a plan for your life, a purpose for your life. My friends, God has made you beautiful. You are made with a purpose. So my friends, God made you with a purpose. You are not here by accident. Second, God says, I give you an identity. Our identity is found in creation. What do you mean by identity? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, so God created human beings, what? In his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. You were created in the image of God. You have value. You have worth. Your worth is so much more than what we see today. See, we have an image problem today. When we look in the mirror, a lot of people, they don't like what they see. A lot of people don't know what they're worth, but the Bible shows us what we're worth. The Bible shows us how much we are worth. The Bible shows us our value. Our value is in Christ. Our value is based on the fact that you are a child of God. Your value is not based on how much you make or what's in your bank account. Your value is not based on what you have achieved. Your value is based on the fact that you are a child of God and no one can take that away from you. You are valuable. You are worth it. In fact, you are worth saving. Jesus Christ came down on the cross to die for who? To die for us. He came down to die for people who aren't worth it. Jesus came to die for us because we are worth it. My friends, we are worth it. The third thing that creation shows us is that shows us who we are. Who are we? Revelation shows us, worship him who made the heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. We see that worship is connected to creation. Worship and creation. When you look in the Bible, we see that we are to worship the creator. The Bible shows us that we are supposed to worship only the Creator. We're not supposed to worship this world. We're not supposed to worship anything else. We are only to worship the Creator. So when we look at a sunrise or a sunset, right? When we look at the beautiful rainbow, when we look at the beautiful animals that were created, when we look at all these beautiful things, we come to a point where we're like, man, there's someone up there that's way more powerful than me. There's someone up there that can do way more beautiful things than I can. And he deserves all of my praise, honor, and worship. In creation, self is lost and God is found. So when we look at creation, we see there is a God and we are not him. There is a God. I didn't make all these things. I didn't make the sun, moon, and stars. Therefore, there's someone up there worth worshiping. So let's look at this Sabbath. Let's go back in our treasure chest and look at the Sabbath. We look and see here that before we looked at the Sabbath was based on creation. We want to look back at creation. But we see something different in Deuteronomy 5. It says, observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And it goes through the same commandment. But it gives a different reason why when we come to Deuteronomy. It says the reason why you should keep the Sabbath in Deuteronomy, it says, remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought you out with a strong and powerful arm. My friends, we are supposed to remember the Sabbath day because of creation, but we're also supposed to remember the Sabbath day because God is our deliverer. 
The, we're supposed to remember because God is our Savior. How many people this looks like your life? It goes up and down. Your life has been hard. Your life has had good times and bad times. And there's times that you can point to where it's just horrible. But my friends, God wants us to remember the Sabbath so that we can remember where God has brought us through. We can remember when God brought you out of that addiction with a strong and outstretched arm. When God brought you out of those problems. When God brought you out of those toxic relationships. Remember the Sabbath day. Why it points to the God is the creator that brought you out of those temptations and moved you into something where you could have freedom. My friends, the Sabbath is, causes us to remember what God has done for us, that he is the deliverer. So the Sabbath points to Jesus as the creator and also points to Jesus as our Savior. My friends, the Sabbath has so much meaning than just coming to church. The Sabbath has meaning. We come to church so that we can praise and worship God and what he has done for us. Oh, my friends, the Sabbath is an antidote to legalism. My friends, people think, oh, you're legalist if you keep the Sabbath, or you're, you're, it's legalism if you keep the Sabbath, but the Sabbath actually is the antidote to legalism, because when you look at the Sabbath, you see the very two things that you can't do. How many people have created yourself? God did that. And in the same way, you didn't create yourself, is in the same way that you can't save yourself. So when we look at the Sabbath, it points to the very two things that you can't do, that you need God for, that God and God alone can do. The Sabbath shows us God's work and what He has done for us. You are no more capable of saving yourself as you are creating yourself. Oh, my friend, the Sabbath has so much meaning, right? Sabbath has so much purpose. God made it for a reason. So the question is, why remember the Sabbath? In 2023, why would, she re why would we remember it? Why is, is it happened 6,000 years ago? How does it still apply to today? Let me show you that the Sabbath has many meanings that come to us today. And obviously the first one, the easiest one, it helps us recover, right? How many people are tired right now? The week has been hard, right? And we get tired. The Sabbath helps us to recover from the week. The Sabbath is a built-in emotional, physical, and mental health day. There's so many mental problems today. There's so many me problems that we have in the world. But imagine you had a day every week where you can put all those problems down and rest. There's so many people burned out but we need a Sabbath to rest. The second thing is we become united. The Sabbath was never meant to separate us, and that is what has happened, that churches have separated. But we see in Isaiah 66 that, that from one Sabbath to the next, all people, all flesh come together to worship God. The Sabbath is a time where God's people come together to worship. It is to bring us together. The Sabbath is to bring our families together because we don't have work, right? So we have time to come together and to grow our family relationships. I'm, my friends, I, when I think of the memories that I have going back home to my family, some of my most cherished memories are just sitting around the house with my mom's cooking, bonding with my siblings. It's wonderful, right? Build your relationships with your family. Third one is to reflect, reflect on God's goodness. I didn't know if you knew, but Psalms 92, it says that it is a song for the Sabbath. It is in there. It specifically says song for the Sabbath. And what does it say? The, the, the psalmist was sitting around saying, I want to write a song for the Sabbath. And what is the first thing he writes? It is good to give thanks. The Sabbath is a day of thanksgiving. It is a day where we come and see God's faithfulness and all that he has done in our lives. The Sabbath is a day where we can look back and see what God has done. It goes on and say, we thank you for all that you have done. The Sabbath is where we see God's works. The fourth one is where we see that we need to love one another. 
Jesus said it best, it is good to do good on the Sabbath. We should not keep the Sabbath just for us. We cannot, should not keep the Sabbath just to, to be in church, but we should use it to help one another, to love one another. We shouldn't just be in church the whole day, but we can use it to love and help each other. The number fifth one is that we get to rejoice. And this is the one that I got confused when I was growing up. See, see, in Isaiah 53, we see this verse and it says, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, if, you, if you're do, not doing your pleasure on the holy day and you call the Sabbath a delight, it says the holy day of the Lord honorable and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words. And we look at this verse and we're like, man, I'm not going to have any fun. This is a day that's going to be boring. This is a day like, like, man, I can't do anything good. This is not going to be happy at all. I'm just going to come to church and it's just going to be, man, boring. But we don't see the next verse. The next verse says, if you do these things, then you will delight yourself in the Lord. My friends, what God is saying here is saying that, yes, put down your own pleasure. But God is saying, because I have a better one. God is saying that my pleasure is greater than any pleasure that you can find in the world. Joy in the Lord, joy with the Lord, joy in spending time with God is always greater than anything else you can do with your time. My friends, the Sabbath is a time where we can say, God says, come into my house, come spend time with me, and this is where you will have your greatest joy in spending time with God. My friends, it is a day where we can rejoice. The sixth one is we can refresh. I love this one. How many people have ever had a nice long nap? A nice long sleep where you wake up and you feel what? You feel, you feel refreshed. And then what? Since you're refreshed, guess what? You can work harder. You can do more, you have more energy. See, those people who didn't keep the Sabbath and they worked throughout the seventh day, guess what? Now they're tired. But on the Sabbath, you just rested. Now you have more energy for the next week to do more. Actually, you can accomplish more by resting. My friends, God made the Sabbath so that we can be refreshed. It says in the Bible that God was refreshed. We, he gives that example so that we can do the same. And the last one we have is to rekindle. The most obvious thing, we want to rekindle. This is a time, this is a day where we have the pleasure to rekindle our relationship with God. My friends, we don't have work, right? We don't have bills today. We don't have worries and cares today because those things we need to give to God. Those burdens we need to give to God so that today we can rest. My friends, the Sabbath is a day of trust. Why? Because we are trusting God. They, we're not working on this day, and we're trusting that, hey, I'm working six days. Somebody else may be working seven days, but I know, God, you're going to take care of me because I trust you. My friends, this is a day where we can focus on God. The Bible says here, and, and as we close, this is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. Revelation chapter 2. Speaking to the early church, speaking to the church that we see in our Bibles, the Acts church. And it says, Jesus speaking, you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake. And it says, you have become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have lost your first love. In this first church, they did so many amazing things. In the church of the Bible, they were healing people, right? They were preaching and thousands of people were saved. All these amazing things. But it says in the process of doing all those amazing things, they lost Jesus. How is that possible? How is it possible to do amazing things for God, to do good things in this world, yet lose your relationship with God? The Sabbath is an example. Yes, you can do good things. Having a job is good, right? Working hard is good. Going to school and studying, this is awesome. Helping others, amazing. Helping out in church, these are such good things. 
But in the process of doing those good things, we cannot have a relationship with God. Oh, my friends, it is a pity that you helped so many people, that you did so many things, that you worked so hard, and yet lost a relationship with God. Sabbath, it gives us a time where we can put those things aside and focus on Jesus. God says, for this day, the, the TV will be there tomorrow. Y your game will be there tomorrow. Netflix will be there tomorrow. All your worries and cares, your bills, they're going to be there tomorrow. But today is me and you. Today, God says, it's our time. Today, God says, let us build and rekindle our relationship. Let's find your first love again. My friends, this is the Sabbath. This is the meaning of it. It has a purpose today that we can do amazing things. God wants us to do amazing things to make an impact on this world. And he gives us this gift in order to be able to accomplish that. That it's more, so much more than just a service. The Sabbath is so much more than just an hour a week. The Sabbath is so much more than just simply or merely a discussion. The Sabbath is something real. It is something that is given from a God of love. It is something that will help you, that will change your life, that will bring you closer to Jesus, and that's the most important thing. In the end, the Sabbath is just a father trying to spend time. trying to spend time with his sons and daughters. Let us take advantage of that. Amen? Amen? Let us take advantage of what God has given us. My friends, let us fall back in love with our first love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you so much for everything that you've done in our lives. For Lord God, we know it's hard. We know that there's a battle going on. We know that there's stress and problems. We know that life is busy. We know that there's good things and bad things out there for us. We know that is why we need you so much. We need you so much in every part of our life, Lord God. Not just our spiritual life, but in our work, in our school, in our families. We need you, God. We need you to be in our lives. Let your presence be with us, not just in church, Lord God, but we know that your presence is going to be with us everywhere we go. Thank you again for all your many blessings, but we thank you for all the many blessings that you will do in the future. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.